Okay, so this is a bit of a walkthrough of the syllabus for A calc and linear algebra. Um, as always, this is a living document, so you should pretty much um, expect it to stay reasonably constant. If I make any changes to them, to this, um, there's a couple things you should know. One, I will announce those changes during class. I will send an email about them, and there will be um, a current version of the syllabus always hosted on Schoology. Um, you can see that like I'm recording this on Monday, and the last revision of this was actually today. So um, occasionally, little things do need to be dealt with. All right. So this is essentially two college level courses that are taught under one title. Um, they are things that would be taken in college after the um, calculus sequence. Um, so advanced calculus is sometimes called multivariate calculus. Um, this is going to get us into um, a little bit more depth of vector valued functions because we're going to extend beyond um, having two dimensions and into three or more dimensions. And we're also going to get into <clears throat> um, multivariate functions where you have um, multiple variables uh, coming into the function and one returning. So that will be the A calc in multivariate portion of things. That's the um, early portion of this. And the later portion of this will be linear algebra, which is essentially using matrices to um, form an algebra to solve problems. Um, it's a little bit newer form of mathematics than calculus. It is a little bit more discrete form of mathematics, but um, highly um, useful in today's world and is the backbone of a lot of our modern math. Um, so that's kind of a, an idea of what you're getting out of this course is essentially <clears throat> two sophomore level college courses. The third one that's usually taken as part of that package is differential equations. So uh, we'll have some DFEQ topics in portions of this course, but we're not doing a full course in DFEQ here. Um, the course block is F. Uh, I'm B. Uh, my free periods are B, D, and G. And uh, that's my email. Email is still my preferred mode of communication. If you um, email me, that's probably the best way to get it to me. And I will act on it. Um, if um, the other thing that I want to point out is please check your email, okay? Because I am dying on this hill that you need to check your email because that's how I'm going to communicate with you if there's changes, shifts, um, updates, anything like that. All right. Um, we have a set of course objectives here, which are pretty lengthy. There's... Um, this is one of these things where it's like, yeah, it's in the syllabus, but until you actually get into the course, it's not going to make a whole lot of sense as to what all this is. Um, you can skim that and kind of, you know, see what we're going after here. I, um, it's basically, all right, it's an overview, right? Uh, things that you need for class every day, you need a pencil. You need your graphing calculator. You need your laptop with MATLAB installed on it. Um, the laptop is critical to the course. MATLAB is critical to both courses. Um, so be aware that we're going to be using that. Um, the other thing to put in there is uh, there is no textbook for this course. So all my notes will be posted online. Um, We'll go from there, but I'm not requiring a textbook for this course. Okay. Um, course has eight units. 
Uh, the first four are the ACALC portion of it, which is vectors in space, vector valued functions, partial derivatives, and then integrals over multiple variables. Um, note our exam in the uh, winter here will be on the 16th of December. And your last assessment for the first half of the course will be around the 9th of January when we get back from break. Um, and then there's four units for the linear algebra portion, which is like systems of equations and matrices, vector spaces, inner product spaces, and finally eigenvectors and eigenvalues, because I think you need to have those before you leave. You'll note that we have no spring exam here because well, you're all seniors and you're going on ISP. And that's just how that's going to work. Um, the exam dates are, the assessment dates are here. Um, as always, these are subject to revision, but those are the tentative assessment dates. Okay, so grading this year is a little different because of the two exams thing. Um, all right, so you will get a final exam, or final grade, which will be the average of your two semester grades. Okay, so that's the one that goes on the transcript, right? Final grade, average of two semester grades. In each semester, your semester grade will be a combination of two grades. One which is going to be called your course grade, and one is your exam grade. So, course grade will count 80%. The exam will count 20%. Um, that's policy. All right, course grade comes from two sources. Summative assessments, which are basically your unit tests, so that'll be 90% of your course grade. Formative assessments, which will be quizzes, comprise about 10% of your course grade. Um, since you're all graduating seniors, see, this is like you're sitting there going, uh, 80 20, but there's no exam in the spring. And, you know, I got it. But because you're all graduating seniors, there's not going to be an exam in the spring. Um, so this implies that 100% of your second semester grade will come from your course grade. There will be no exam grade in the second semester because you're all graduating seniors. All right. In the spirit of knowing, of being someone who knows advanced calculus and linear algebra, as opposed to someone who seems to know this, there will be no extra credit. So don't even try it. However, because this is a non-AP course, you get two retakes, okay? So you can retake any two summative assessments during the school year. Uh, retakes have to be done one cycle within a cycle after the assessment is returned. You should notify me of your intention to retest via email and the retest score will be the average of the score and the earlier tests. So it will be like if you got an 80, sorry, if you got like a 70 and you got a 90, and 70 on the first test, a 90 on the retest, the test score goes in as an 80, okay? So it's the average of the two. Um, keep in mind that I'm looking at things like perseverance, critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, curiosity. These are things that when I write my comments on the report cards, this is what I write from. So I look at the, that list of things and I go, is the student doing these things? And that's how I write my comments okay um students will be evaluated on your work habits engagement attention to detail organization self-advocacy and timely completion of work these are the sliders on the report cards so just be aware that you do get um progress reports on that as well um attendance this is like straight from the student handbook um if you have an unplanned Absence such as an illness, you got to talk to me when you get back to figure out how to make up the work. Um, you should be turning in the work that was due on the day you were absent because that makes sense, okay? Um, please be aware that study hall is always an option to make up quizzes and tests. Uh, it also could be done during free periods, but whether you're day or boarding, study hall is there. Feel free to use that you know stay for dinner if you're a day student whatever we're there okay so whether an absence is planned or unplanned um you are to be making up your work right um 
uh, planned absence two days ahead of time. You have to have that planned absence form and we'll work that out. Uh, if you cut a class, which is missing more than half, you get yourself six demerits. Don't do it. Uh, if you're missing more than 10 minutes of the class, you get two demerits. And if you're late for class within the first 10 minutes, you get one. So please be mindful of that. That's what it says in the handbook. All right. Academic honesty. This is the, hey, don't cheat, right? I mean, it seems like obvious, but it's also like treacherous ground here. Um, a word on collaboration in my world. Um, the way I think of collaboration in mathematics is that the, uh, the two students would sit down with a single sheet of paper. They would work together, come up with good answers. And then they would take that sheet of paper, throw it away. And then they would create their own independent work that can be turned in. That in my mind is a good model for what collaboration should look like. Um, if you have questions about whether or not you're collaborating or you are plagiarizing, just ask, I'll let you know. Um, you know, one of these things, don't put other people in awkward situations. Like if you're asking for, you know, somebody else's work to copy or you're asking somebody who's coming out a test, how the tests go, or if you're absent on a test day, don't ask students what was on the test. That's just, you know, not being a person of integrity. All right, so that's all like the downside kind of disclaimer kind of things that need to be in a syllabus. Um, on the upside, I'm really excited about this course. Um, I really enjoy this course because it gives me an opportunity to work with some pretty high level mathematics with some pretty awesome students without having to prep for an AP exam. So we get to take off some of the pressure and get into some of the creativity and some of the elegance of math. And uh, it's a kind of cool course. All right. So I'm excited to get started. And this is uh, your walkthrough on the syllabus. All right. Thank you.